Kiran, people are waiting to hear from you. I'm so, so grateful to you, Dev. Yes, you're right in introdu introducing me that I'm both a family and a friend. And the second woman of the Indian police service was none other than your wife, <coughs> Kanchan Chaudhary. She was Kanchan Chaudhary, my cousin, and they came Kanchan Bhattacharya. And she was also the first director general of police in India of any state, which you did not mention, so it's my duty to do that. So we are both a family and a friend. And you something which you don't know, I will tell you, that Kanchan, your wife, unfortunately is no more, is uh, she wrote the IPS on my coaxing. I made her write the IPS as a first preference so that I have a cousin in the Indian police service. I miss her today, but I'm so happy to be introduced to you, uh, introduced uh, by none other than a family and a friend. I want to thank Karen Shaver for giving me this rare opportunity of addressing this great conference. Let me say, I'm pleased to release the rise value and I will focus on responsible. Inspired by what Dev, uh, what, uh, Dev Bhattacharya has, the manner in which he's introduced me, and he's asked you to refer to my fearless governance book. I'm, I don't know, I'm changing my mind right now to share with you what my current thoughts are. I also wish to recognize before I say anything further, is our very eminent panelist, Jalpa Ratna, uh, Elizabeth Vacuse and Ravina Rajkoli, who I really look forward to listening to be inspired from this World Summit. I had collected my thoughts on what, what um, responsible behavior is and responsibility is by very, very wise thoughts. But I thought I, I'm changing my mind right now to present to you what happened with my sense, heightened sense of responsibility as Lieutenant Governor of Puducherry in India. And that's what this book is all about. It's almost a model for public servants and public service in India, and even private sector and public sector leadership. When Indra Nui released my book, I was very, very honored and privileged that she and Debushi's Chatterjee, the IMM director of Kozikon, they both jointly released my book. And Indira said that this book cuts across private and public sector leadership. Uh, let me share with you a little case study in the time frame given to me by Karen and reveal to you how important it is for public servants to exercise fullest responsibility, be it the elected representatives or be it the appointed representatives or be it in private sector leadership with performance with purpose, as Indira Nui rightly said. If you all get into performance with purpose, I think the world will be a totally different place to live in. There will be no have-nots. There will only be haves when there is performance with purpose, whether it's a public official or whether it's a private sector leadership. And the case study which I'm sharing with you is when I took the oath as the 24th Lieutenant Governor of Puducherry, I did not just did the technical oath. That was the ritual. The ritual was you'd say, I abide by the Indian constitution and uphold the integrity and sovereignty of this country. I said, I will follow this oath with a mission statement. And that was the concept called T. I said, the T means trust, empowerment, and accountability. That's my last word. Accountability is another other side of the coin of responsible behavior. And when I gave the tea mantra to the people in my opening speech, it was said to me ritually, ma'am, it's always the oath. You don't speak after that. I said, no, I shall let people of Puducherry and the public officials of Puducherry know what am I here for? I'm not here to live in a beautiful palace, a former French territory of Puducherry, most beautiful palace to live in at Raj Devas. I declared, what am I here for? And I said, I'm going to be trustworthy. I'm here to empower you and I'm here to form my accountability. I raised my accountability in the opening statement when I addressed responsible behavior as a lieutenant governor of that union territory. From responsible behavior, I did unconventional things of responsible expression. And the key was I opened my 
closed institution of a palace called Rajnivas or the residential office of the Lieutenant Governor to people's grievances. And I kept aside a fixed time for them to come and be with me and tell me anything they want, anything. From four to seven every day, from the second day of my Lieutenant Governorship, Raj Nivas became a people Nivas. Anybody could walk in by a token system on first come first serve were, were heard anything. Do you know what happened? It became, it started to percolate accountability and responsibility into the rank and file. But third thing what happened, it increased a lot of hostility from those who were very, very, who were irresponsible. Those elected representatives, all public servants who were not exercising this accountability, visibility and accessibility suddenly became uncomfortable and you had a raised hostility. And for five long years, I had to go through a fearless governance because it was one exercise of responsibility. On the other hand, there was a whole vested interest of being against responsibility behavior, but personal, personal vested interest to be expressed, but not a responsible behavior. Now, responsible behavior meant as a public servant or as a public official, or it, you can call it as an administrator was opening up my system, make myself more accountable. Second, I reach out. Don't people come to me? No, as a public servant, as a responsible person, I go to see the problem, not only ask for paper reports, but go and see the problem, which meant every Saturday, Sunday, as a lieutenant governor, I used to sometimes cycle. I used to bike. And as a team, we cycled around the city. By cycling around the city, I further raised everybody's responsible or collaborative partnership. When I'm biking, as a lieutenant governor, as a team leader, sometimes with national cadet corps students, sometimes with beat officers, sometimes with my own public officials going to the spot where it needs to be seen, not just keep getting reported. It made all the world of a difference in collaborative participation. Never had they seen a lieutenant governor out of a Mercedes car on a cycle to be with a common citizen. Third, what I did was gratitude where I did whatever gifts I got were not mine as a left and governor. They were meant people to people. So I used to carry all the gifts which I was receiving, particularly the shawls. In Tamil Nadu, you get very good introductory shawls. I used to gift away the shawls to the sanitary workers, turn by turn, stopping my cycle and giving them the shawls because it is because of them. There were many, many things and I would urge you, yes, it's worth it. Fearless governance royalties have all been donated to causes which I espouse. I have two major foundations called Navjoti India Foundation and India Vision Foundation, which reaches out to have nots in the prisons, in rural areas, <coughs> in urban areas. And they're both 30 years old and the product of Maxisi Award, which I dedicated, uh, they all dedicated to these foundations. So therefore, I'm not here to promote my book. I'm here to share public sense of responsibility with the measures have been stated very clearly that if political masters, political leaders, public officials appointed or nominated, whoever they be, if they become more visible, they become express accountability, they, word, they, they match their word with deed and that they are giving rather than taking the way I was to give away all my gifts. I tell you, this world will be a different place to live in. Let me conclude by saying what I read in the newspaper this morning by a spiritual quote, and it's from Swami Paramahans Yogananda Ji. It is from this morning times of India. Karen, when I was preparing my thoughts for your event, and they, this is what it is. It says secret law. Those who seek prosperity for themselves alone are in the end bound to become poor or to suffer from mental inharmony. But those who consider the whole world as their home and care and work for group or world prosperity, find the individual prosperity that is legitimately theirs. This is the secret of law. Finally, I, would, this, I thought this would be a very good spiritual uh, uh, recall sayings, life is the acceptance of responsibilities. 
or their evasion. It is a business of meeting obligations or avoiding them. To every man, the choice is continually being offered. But by the manner of his choosing, you may fairly measure him. This is said by Ben Ams Williams. With this, I rest my case. I think there's a message of responsibility, responsible political behavior, responsible public interest behavior, responsive journalistic behavior, responsible private sector behavior, responsible behavior as citizens. And I would say, begin with children, begin with the youth. Once you begin with the youth, you have sown a whole generation of youth, generations of responsible behavior. Let's give our children both roots and wings, roots of responsible behavior and wings of freedom and independence. Thank you, Karen, once again. Thank you, Dev. Thank you, Nareshi, for giving me this rare opportunity to be heard and to share. Thank you once again.